Hey folks, welcome to another edition of the uh, Church Solutions Podcast. My name is Phil Thompson. And I'm Steve Lacey. And uh, we are doing our little video experiment as well as our podcasting. And so we'll just kind of see how things progress here. Uh, this is a podcast that we do usually once a week. We are a company called JSL Solutions. Tell us a little bit about JSL Solutions before we get into today's topic. Sure. JSL Solutions provides uh, three main products, streamingchurch.tv, Church App Live, and myflock.com. And All geared for ministry. That's right. We're geared towards uh, helping churches. Our, our vision is to help churches use technology to, to reach people, to, um, to grow their church. Yeah, to, to grow their church, and which is what we're... Actually, we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about some, some things, uh, five things specifically, unless we go a little bit more, five things specifically to talk about when it comes to church growth. Yes, we are. So we want so, to get into it? Yeah, let, let's do this. So let, let me preference this by saying this is probably not necessarily a tech related topic, although you can certainly involve tech in your growth. Mm -hmm. But uh, because Steve and I have a lot of experience, and by a lot I mean tons of experience when it comes to church leadership, uh, I'm in pastoral ministry, even part-time now, I've helped start the churches. Uh, Steve, you've been on leadership teams for years and years. So uh, we, we're not exactly rookies when it comes to helping churches grow. Right. We've got some experience. So uh, I'm, this is material that I, I, I'm fresh off a leadership team retreat, and church growth was one of our topics. And so uh, this is one of my uh, my little pet peeves. I don't know if I want to pet peeves the right word, but I, I'm passionate about this. But I'm also I also know sometimes that uh, churches go about it the wrong way sometimes. Right. So we're gonna we're gonna be bouncing uh, growth for health versus being healthy and growing, right? Or, yeah. So uh, there's a couple ways to look at this. Yeah, there's there's some ways to look at this. So uh, a lot of times, let me put my glasses on so I can watch my look at my notes here. So a lot of times, and this, I was, I've been guilty of this in the past, where, you know, we just got to grow. We've got to grow. And so the focus that I've had sometimes on the past has been growth, okay? And, and the idea is that, well, if you're growing, then you must be healthy. Right. Right. So if you're not growing, you must not be healthy. And, and there's some truth to that, but let's get that. But it, it's a little bit putting the cart before the horse. If you focus on growth so much just for the sake of growth, not for the sake of church health. Right. If that makes any sense. I don't know if that's so. What happens is you, you, you focus so much on growth that you just it's like you don't care about anybody else. You just care about numbers. Right. Yeah. And so we're going to kind of talk about. You know, some of the pitfalls that when you do focus on growth and then and then turning that around and focusing on the health that would lead to the growth. Yeah, so. exa exactly. So so what are some of the problems of focusing on growth? Well, and, and I'm guilty. As I said, I've been guilty of this. Part of the problem is, is a lot of times people are thought of as, um, you know, just masses, not numbers. just numbers, not individuals. Right. So, uh, and then, you know, you're a senior pastor, if you are a senior pastor or, or a key person on your leadership team, you know, if you're just talking about that, you're, you're kind of accused of treating people like numbers, and there can be some truth to that, right? Uh, you know, uh, and then uh, more and more ministries, you end up creating more and more ministries. You're, you're laughing. At I was life. just, I had a just, a, I was thinking about what we were talking about earlier about um, my church talking about their online attendance numbers had been dropping recently. And so they were really focused on the numbers and somewhat obsessed over the numbers. So, well, it's it's easy to get that way. And, and there was, yeah, and I'm just, it kind of parallels what we're talking about yeah. today. Oh, good. Because we're saying, here's some things you can do to right. kind of focus on the yeah. people and your health that will lead to the growth rather than yeah. focusing on just the numbers. Right. Well, and and, that, and so what happens is, you know, you, you're, you're thinking of masses, you're not thinking of individuals. Uh, because you're so, you know, occupied with growth. And then the other thing, too, is you start creating more programs or more ministries uh, in order to try to reach different types of people. <laughs> in order so, to grow. In order to grow. Uh, another thing we've got listed here is that leaders, a lot of times, will start spending money like the church is bigger than what it really is. Right. You know, and because you're, uh, and, and some of that could be because you're, 
maybe looking at some of these mega churches or looking at some of these other churches that seem to have growth. And so you're looking at them going, well, they spent a lot of money here. They spent a lot of money there. Therefore, we should spend a lot of money. Right. And you start doing that. So um, one of the problems with focusing on just the growth piece of it yeah. is you're going to be bouncing around with a bunch of different things going on. Right. And you kind of lose your direction. And people go, what is, where is this church going? You keep chasing this rabbit of uh, different. That, that can certainly happen when you're really just focusing on growth. Uh, instead of, you know, focusing on health is what right. we want to talk about here. So, uh, and then the other thing is uh, uh, a lot of times you, uh, and this kind of goes along with this thing, you, you start adding staff uh, hoping that you're going to grow. And the idea is that if we just add staff, this will help us grow, which can be true at times. It just depends on the situation. Uh, and so your ministry budget takes a hit because you're adding more staff mm -hmm. and it may not be the right time to do that. Uh, another thing is, uh, you know, you start making decisions to try to increase attendance, not necessarily to reach people or reach the unchurched people. And by that, I mean, it's easier sometimes to, uh, I don't think your church does this at all, but it's easier sometimes to try to reach people that are already going to church somewhere else. Uh, existing Christians. Trading, trading sheep, huh? Yeah, you know, and, and I mean, I've been doing this for years, doing ministry for years since the late 70s, and I've seen this happen a lot. I, I've seen people attract other churches, other people from other churches. Uh -huh. Maybe not on purpose, but certainly, you know, it's like, yeah, we don't care. You know, if they come to us, good. Maybe they need to come to us instead of those guys. Could be some, a little bit of truth of that, depending on the situation, but again, uh, the, the, the point here is you're not really trying to reach people that don't go to church. You can fall into that trap. You're just trying to reach people, not necessarily the unchurched. All right. So it's really, as you talked about earlier, just a, a change of where your focus is or where your emphasis is. Yeah. So as we transition, so what's the, what are the, the five things for church growth, or really this should be the five things for church health that will right. lead to growth, right? Yeah. That's what that's what I would call it. I would I would call it. Uh, you you want to try to to build some things in to, to have a healthy church, so that it will grow naturally. Uh, and and so let's talk about that. So uh, it kind of comes down to what we just touched on earlier, and that is uh, it's it's about people, not necessarily numbers. So uh, you know, especially if you're a smaller church, uh, names. You know, I mean, are you? And, and we went through this whole thing at my my leadership team retreat. I, I'm part of a church that's about two years old. It is and it isn't two years old, but it's a long story. But and, and I'm part of, and, and I've got a leadership 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 team that really wants to help, and they're great people. But uh, one of the things I noticed right away when I started working with this church two years ago was they weren't real people oriented. And if you're going to grow your church and, and be healthy, you've got to connect with the people you have especially new people walking in the door. So you've got to be friendly, mm -hmm. which means you've got to get to know people's names. Right. So um, you know, it's really an emphasis about talking about names rather than numbers. So uh, I guess an example of that would be, oh, wow, it was a great Sunday last weekend. We had you know 150 people come to our church, and that was great, as opposed to talking about, you know, Mary came, and she'd not been before, and let me tell you Mary's story. Yeah, so, or, 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 you know, Jim came back, uh, you know, it's like his second time coming back and or his third time, you know what I mean? And so uh, I would just simply say this, that, and this is what I'm kind of working with, with my people on, is we got to get to know some people. I mean, my church, for instance, is about 100 people. And in the summer, it's only been around 70 or 80. But, you know, we're not that big where you can't get to know some of these people's names. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe from there, you know, get to know them a little better off. I don't know if that makes any sense or not. So, uh so that means it's not just you as a pastor or, you know, you as a key volunteer listening to this podcast, but it's it's actually involving your team, your leadership team, getting them out and about. Uh, and again, let, let me just get on my soapbox here, okay? What would happen a lot of times, people would be walking in the door, right? Well, there'd be two or three groups of people in the corners talking about the football season or something like that, and, and, and there would not be a lot of attention given to newer people. 
And so when you don't do that, uh, you definitely you're... need to, it's, it's, it's much easier to, to hang with the people you know than yeah. to walk across the room and say, Hey, I haven't seen you before. Let me, yeah. you know, so, yeah. Especially if you're a, if an introvert, you know, which a lot of my leadership teams introverts. So yeah. uh, nothing wrong with that. It's just a little harder. It makes them a little more comfortable. All right. So where are we at here? So that was number one. Talk about names more than the numbers. Right. Okay. What is number two? Right. So number two would be really stay focused on actually reaching people who are far from God or, or certainly not connected anyhow to, to some kind of a faith, you know, a family, to a church. You know uh -huh. I mean? so, so you want to stay focused on those kind of people. Uh, the bottom line is if a healthy church should be a church that cares about reaching the right people. And this touches a little bit on what we just said a few minutes ago, okay? Uh, you know, you're making decisions on what is the best thing you can do to reach the unchurched people in your community. Uh, what I'm getting at is not necessarily reaching the church, the people that go to so-and-so's church across the street, or, you know, let's have a better praise and worship band. So, and then those guys, so these yeah. guys will come over to our... <laughs> yeah. which, 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 you know... I've seen that. I've seen that happen in my church. I've seen, you know, and it, it really does. It's kind of competition, but it's not spoken competition. Mm -hmm. But but the bottom line is, you know, what are you doing to try to reach people that are not connected to churches in your community, the unchurched, people that, you know, may have an interest in God, but, but don't really know where to go. And, uh, yeah, and this is going to be how you uh, set up the language that's in your church, Things that you offer, you want to. You know, if you're reaching, if your target is the unchurched, you're going to want to uh, create an environment that is open and welcoming to that, uh, and that people can understand. And and also, you know, advertising. I mean, we've talked about this before in our podcast, but I, I, I'm real big on churches advertising. But you have to find the right, the right medium. You know, right. The, right, the right media outlet. If you want to steal some sheep, you go to the Christian radio station, yeah. right? Well, you could. <laughs> Uh, you know, we well, could, although, let me just say this, too. When I was in Christian broadcasting, which was almost 20 years uh, total, and I still was working with churches, but, uh, you know, with that with Christian broadcasting was kind of my bread and butter, if you want to say that. There was, there's actually been a lot of, there's a lot of people that are unchurched. Oh, that are listening. That, that are that listening is true, right. to I've Christian some broadcasting. Of the statistics are yeah. pretty uh, yeah, amazing. Yeah. A and, large percentage. Yeah, and, and actually when I started a church in Kansas, there was a new Christian station that started uh, that we just kind of jumped on as far as getting involved with them. And, and, and we actually reached a lot of people that, uh, you know, they, they may have been Christians, but they weren't they weren't connected anywhere. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they wanted to grow spiritually. And they wanted to be a part of the church. So I don't think Christian broadcasting is, is, is necessarily the wrong place to go when you're trying to reach people. But I, I don't think it's the only place either. Right. So, you know, you, you want to try to try some other outlets that might work to reach people. So, All right. Yeah. All right. So here we Are go. we moving on? Number three? Yeah, let's move on. So uh, the other thing about how to how to build a healthy church that's going to naturally grow is, is really, you know, working with your staff and your volunteers in a practical way. Uh, so, so what do you mean by that? Well, okay. So for me, again, this is a lot of this is based on my the beatings will continue until morale improves. Yeah, exactly. Is that what you mean? <laughs> well, what? <laughs> that's pretty good. But uh, what happens is I'm I'm a guy that tends to push. Or I used to really push my staff and my volunteers to really let's come on. We got to reach these people. We got to put in the hours. We got to put in the time. We've got to sacrifice for God. Mm -hmm. You know, sacrifice for the church. We didn't usually say church. We just said God. You know, but we meant church. <laughs> and so uh, a lot of times it's, it's, there's a real drive to push people. And, you know, I think there's times to do that and there's times not to do that. Yeah. So so what what's a healthy balance for that look like? Well, I think it I think it's going to depend on your staff or your volunteers or a combination of both, because if you're a small church, you may not have a very large staff. But I think it's going to have to depend upon. Uh, you know, if, if we're talking a healthy church here, uh, we've got to give people, you know, make sure they're not working on their days off, uh, yeah. give so, them. I think what, you know, we have in the notes here, I thought is a good way to put it is manage them in a, or lead them in a sustainable rhythm, yeah. meaning, mm -hmm. 
it's a regular rhythm of expectations for both work and time off and that sort of thing. And, and such that it's it's something that can be sustained for a long time. Now, you know, there's going to be times when, oh my gosh, you've got to work, you've got to really crunch and, and crank something out for right. a few days. But then, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to keep things at that level. You want to bring it back down and, and make sure the important things are the important things yeah. with your staff, that, you know, family, and yeah. Absolutely. that sort of thing. Yeah, I, I, th I think so. Family and, and having times of rest and yeah and i think it's going to be different for every church but i think if you know and, and some pastors are not like this but some are what i like i used to be and i was somebody that would drive i drove 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 you know in the sense of let's let's do this you know kind of a thing and and uh, that can be hypocritical you know so yeah that's where i'm at on that so it really as it applies to you know your, your volunteer leaders then you know, really turn them off and yeah, burn them and out well, Oh, or yeah. burn them out. Absolutely. So, but you can do that for your paid staff, too. Right. I mean, you, it, you can turn them off and burn them out, too. It can be the same deal, you know. All right. Uh, so, um, absolutely. All right. So, so, that's number three. Yeah. So, number four. Uh, so, budget. So, you want to make sure, and this is something that, that I tried to do with actually my church this year because I'm kind of their executive guy. Uh, budget on what you have, not necessarily on what you hope to have. And... I just think you have to be careful. I'm a little conservative when it comes to budgeting. I think you are too. And it's easy sometimes to get caught up and we're going to grow. We've got to do this. We've got to fill this gap. We need a staff person to do this. You know, we have to advertise over here. Yeah. And, 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 you know, you're, you're, you're trying to be optimistic and you're trying to move forth with faith, you know, because, hey, God honors your faith and you want to step out in faith and do that. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but I think, Sometimes you have to be a little more conservative on your budget. And then, hey, if God blesses you and you get more money than you anticipate it, then you can do something with it, you know, in the terms of putting it somewhere to help you grow more. Right. And you know that, um, you know, my, our, our buddy uh, Dave Ramsey yes. talks about variable income. Or well, he's your that, buddy, but go ahead. Yeah. yeah. He's good. And, I like and him, it's, yeah. it's probably a healthy way to look at this is you, know, you budget on, on what you anticipate coming in, but then you can also plan for if I get more than if I was to get, you know, these four things done on the, the budget that I have coming in right. and I get a little more than I can work on the fifth thing or the sixth thing. Right. So you budget in a manner that um, will allow you to kind of walk down the list to um, yeah, you know, achieve the things that if you get, if you do better than you anticipate. So. Yeah, you're you're being strategic, but at the same time you're being practical. Yes, and realistic. Systematic. Yes, you don't want to yeah. overextend yourself. And, yeah. Uh, so I I was in I, charge of making the budget this past year for my church, and I kind of inherited. I always tell them I inherited this mess, you know, kind of like what Obama says, you know, when uh, people accuse him. But we're now we're getting political. Sorry. So uh, I I I basically uh, inherited kind of a messy situation. So I. And one of the things we did for us is we actually had a pledge campaign, which they had never, ever done before, you know, encouraging people, to, what, hey, what you're going to give for 2015, a pledge. And we went through that whole thing. So we had all these numbers from people that said, hey, we're going to pledge this much money, blah, blah, blah. So I, I looked at that. And I looked at how just my knowledge of church growth and finances. And so I was very conservative with my budget, very conservative. And I cut a lot of things. And then I... I, I didn't, even though we had projected more money, I didn't go with that projection because I also know that sometimes when people pledge, things come up and they can't mm -hmm. fulfill their pledge. And, 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 you know, it happens. You know, you lose your job or something happens, a sickness in the family. So uh, I really was very conservative. Well, guess what? We're doing really well this year. Uh, we're not quite in the, re in the black, but we're very close to being in the black. And, and I just, I didn't yeah. overspend. And we're, you know, the year's not done yet, but we're doing much better because I was just conservative. So I didn't, I didn't go out all guns on what yeah, maybe we could have. It's a had. much healthier position to be in when yeah. you go on that route, and as opposed to, oh my gosh, I was planning on growth and, you know, right. a ten percent growth this year, and we didn't hit the ten percent. We had this big problem, and, yep. and oh my gosh, what am I going to do? And I go back to my people and say, oh, we're out of money, and it just, it's a downward yeah. spiral, right? Yeah. And it's like. What, you know, 
yeah. gets worse. Yeah. Really. Yeah. It's it's always good to be pleasantly surprised than to be negatively surprised. Yes. <laughs> and 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 right now for my church, we're pleasantly surprised, but that's because we kind of plan things out and I'm not, it's not all, I'm sound like I'm blowing my own horn here and I probably am, but it's the people, the people actually who are made pledges are doing what they said they were going to do. Right. And, 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 and their, their people are giving. And so it's not just cause I was such a brilliant, you know, budgeter so much, but, but I was conservative and, and the other people helped out right. with things, and so we're doing pretty good. Right. So, so we're going over the five things for building a healthy church that will naturally grow. Okay. So number one was talk uh, more about names and numbers. Mm -hmm. Number two is staying focused on reaching people far from God, and then leading your number three is leading your staff in sustainable rhythms. You know, have adequate expectations. Number four has to do with budgeting based on what you have versus what you wish you had. And then number five, what is number five? So number five has a lot to do with actually number one, in my opinion. And we said number one was talk about names more than numbers. And to me, that means relationships. You know, when you're talking about names, you're talking about relationships. So number five is focusing on the next steps uh, just as much as attendance. So here's what... What does that mean? Okay. Focus on next steps. What's that mean? I'm glad you asked that. So <laughs> so here's what typically happens. And, and this is happening at your church. It happens at my church. It happens at, at for probably any church that really does want to grow and is trying to figure out how to grow. We look at numbers. We look at the attendance. And so we might be good, hopefully good, and you should. You should do this. You should be really good at your attendance. You should, you should focus on your attendance, how many people you have coming. But it's more than just... How many people showed up? Right. So, okay. so what is next steps? So, so next steps mean? would be so if you have people coming, uh, and if you are people, if you're a church that, that, that encourages people to give their hearts to God and salvations, you, 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 I would encourage you to to mark that down. To if there's a way you can record people who have given their life to Christ, right. Mark so that there's down. A, write it down I somewhere. Mean, there's a natural progression of the health. Of the attender, right? That's right. going to go through yeah. from being far from God yeah. to having a, a exactly thriving so, relationship with God. So there's going to be a process, right? Right. So that's so the next step. So okay, you got people coming. How many people have really given their life to Christ? Okay, and if you are able to record that somehow, and if and then even baptism, you know, if if your church believes in water baptism, uh, you know, they want to get baptized. You know, that's another thing you should record. It's an indication that's that something's happening in somebody's life. Yeah. Their life is changing. They're taking next steps. Yeah, they're taking the they're next going step. going beyond exactly. the first step to the next yeah. step. So again, it's not just writing down, okay, we had 86 people this week, but it's, all right, 86 people, we had four people give their life to God. We had two people baptized. Uh, yeah. It can be other and things besides that. Three people that are new volunteers to yeah. you know, whatever You're, it may be. Plugging in to ministry, right. uh, small group participation. Uh, okay, so again, you know, I'm, I'm on this rant and rave right now because I just had a leadership team meeting, and, and we talked about a simulation. A simulation is, okay, how can we get these people that are coming involved? Mm -hmm. Get them, you know, there's there's jokes about the Star Trek thing of a simulation with the Borg and all that stuff. And there was a lot of jokes flying around about that. But, but honestly, a healthy church is going to get people assimilated. They're going to get connected, and they're going to be involved in your church. That's a sign of a healthy church. So, you know, uh, one of the things, this church never had small groups. So, you know, I had to, it was like pulling teeth. <laughs> Again, nice people, but just, you know, a lot of this stuff was a little different for them. So, you know, we need to have small groups. So we started small groups last year. Okay, now we're going to increase our small groups. Uh, there's, here's, a, here's something, too, that, that I just had this major breakthrough, okay? Um, we don't really have membership at our church, but we do. So here, you here's what you do. You're well, not real here, here's what, with everyone. Here's what, here's the funny part. Okay. I'm running out of time here, but and, and I, I may get in trouble for this. Okay. But, but we would say, Hey, if you agree with us and you like our church, then poof, you're a member. And that's kind of the thing we have. Okay. And, and again, it's not necessarily wrong. Okay. But, but we had people that were looking for more. Well, what does it mean to be a member of this church? You know, well, poof, you're a member. No. Uh, so we're going to start having what, what I would call, how can I say this? It's they're, they're membership good. classes. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, we're not 
maybe going to call it membership classes. Maybe we are. I don't know. But we're going to have classes for people that want to get, you know, want to find out more about our church and, and, and be members. Then we're going to have another class for spiritual growth. Hey, here's how you can introduce things into your life that will help you grow spiritually. Then we're going to probably have another class for people discover their gifts and talents. And we'll probably have another one that, that focuses on reaching out, mm -hmm. you know, to our community. So uh, this is a big, it, it's a big breakthrough for me as an executive because, in my opinion, when these people start doing this, if it's done right, they're going to get connected. And so you're going to see more people taking the next step. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so that's so where that's I'm what at. next steps is about. Well, so next steps is more than just numbers. So if right. you want to have a healthy church, you want to get people involved. Right. That's really the next step. So whatever that might be for them, might be giving their life to God. Maybe they've been Christians for a long time. Maybe they need to serve somewhere. Maybe they need to lead somewhere. Mm -hmm. Those are the things we're talking about. All right. Makes sense. So that's our top five. Yeah. So that's where we're at. So we're out of time. But uh, here's what we would ask of you for your next step. Let us know if... Uh, if we can help you with anything, we're a tech company, but we also obviously have a heart for churches and we have some ideas here. So we'd love to hear from you. If there's a topic you would like us to cover, send us an email. What's the email, Steve? Support at streamingchurch.tv. Right, very good. You, got, you know that by heart. Yeah. Support at streamingchurch.tv is an email. Hey, you want to give us some feedback on what we've been talking about. Maybe you think we're totally off the wall on this thing, and that's okay. You, we'd love to hear from you. Give us, Let us know what you think about this. Uh, if we can help you in any way, that's what we're all about. So we are out of time. You can catch us on iTunes. Subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. Simply go to iTunes and look for Church Solutions uh, Podcast. podcast. Yeah, that's something what it like is. That. Yeah, something like that. And we're also on YouTube. Look maybe for streamingchurch.tv on YouTube. Uh, you can find us on newmediaministries.tv. And uh, you can always just go to our website and find some other things on streamingchurch.tv we got all sorts of websites, yeah. a lot of stuff, you know, all right. so you can get connected. So, All right, so we are out of time. Uh, he is Steve Lacey, as you see him here if you're watching the video. Uh, my name is Phil Thompson. We will catch you next time on another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.